Hi, welcome to this course. This course is S4 HANA Finance Fiori Accounts Receivable Analytics. So this course is directed for accounts receivable staff who are working with S4 HANA specifically. So what we're really going to cover in this course are specialized Fiori apps. And there's a couple of different types we're going to cover. So one type of Fiori app is called an overview page app. And the other ones I'm going to cover for advanced analytics are smart business apps. And together, both these apps give you advanced reporting capabilities for accounts receivable in S4HANA. So this course builds on the base capability from the accounts receivable bootcamp course. So what we're going to cover in this course are seven example Fiori AR reporting apps. The course will have live demos and a quick reference guide at the end. Now, if you need more information just on AR business process itself, please utilize the available Accounts Receivable Bootcamp course because this course assumes that you already understand the process and we are now focusing on the analytics, advanced analytics only. So this is a 60-minute course. What we'll cover is how to run the more advanced AR analytics apps via Fiori. We're going to show you how to personalize each Fiori app to meet your own reporting requirements. And a key component here is to how to create live tile dashboards to monitor your AR process end-to-end -end without having to write any code. And this is a key feature. So in more detail, we're going to first look at the Accounts Receivable Overview app. We'll show you how to personalize this overview page app for AR and customize it to your taste. We're then going to look at various different smart business apps. So we're going to look at an app called Total Receivables. We're going to look at Overdue Receivables. We're going to look at Overdue Receivables by Risk Class and Future Receivables. So these are a suite of different apps, all allowing you to look at different age analysis, uh, slice and dice your overdue and your future receivables for analysis, how to look at it by top 10 customer, by risk, and by different age buckets. Then the other last two apps are key performance indicators. So there's one called Days Beyond Terms, and this is a KPI to look at a 12-month Days Beyond Terms trend over time for collections efficiency. And the last one is a Day, day Sales Outstanding Key Performance Indicator, and this also allows you to look at a 12-month trend for DSO for collections efficiency. And depending on your type of business will depend on whether Days Beyond Terms or Day Sales Outstanding is more applicable for your organization. So these courses are all based on S4HANA Finance. So all the underlying data uses the new General Ledger Universal Journal as its underlying base. So if you don't have an S4HANA system, then this course won't be applicable. And this course is also recorded on release 1809. So features on your local system will also depend on the version that you have. Different versions have the same concept, but newer versions will have better capabilities. And as mentioned, this course uses the new S4HANA user experience, which is called Fiori, and all of the apps are based on SAP Fiori apps or applications. So for those of you who are not familiar with Fiori, Fiori is SAP's new user experience. It consists of different lightweight apps that are tailored to specific tasks, and these apps can either mimic or replace existing SAP transactions or groups of transactions, but they can also help with reporting and analytics. Generally, they can also be accessible on multiple devices, whether it's your phone or um, your PC or Mac or an iPad. These apps tend to be role-based. They're very adaptive and simple and much easier to use. So for more information, you can always go to this link to understand a bit more about Fiori. So with that said, let's get on with the course. Right, so for accounts receivable analytics, the job roles that you'll find these apps assigned to is the standard SAP job role accounts receivable analytics. So in S4HANA, these are embedded analytics. So you don't need any separate data warehouse or BW to be able to run these reports in a standard S4HANA system. So these are new OLAP reporting Fiori apps for accounts receivable. And you'll, they allow you to do detailed graphical and drill down dashboards powered by S4HANA. The old classic reports are still available via SAP GUI transaction codes. This is just an example of the menu below. So they are still usable, and you can look at the previous accounts receivable bootcamp course on how to use these T codes, but this course is focused on the new Fiori apps. So let's see what they look like. So the main difference in these two main types of apps is an overview page apps and smart business apps. They all give additional powerful analytical capability. So the screen you're looking at right here, each um, 
tile or square here represents a different Fiori app. And now what I'm showing here is in the top row, these are the standard apps that are delivered by the SAP system. So when it comes out the box and you install the app, they will look something like this. So the the values over here will often default um, you know, to euro or other values. They might cover all company codes, and they're just going to be the way that they came out of the SAP box. But what you can do with each of these apps is to personalize them. In other words, you save a personalized version of the standard app, and that's what this bottom row is representing. So in other words, here the standard system had 13.49 million of total receivables with all company codes. Here I've created a personalized version for U.S. company codes only to show me that there's only 8 million. For this app, OBG Receivables, I created a special double-wide tile, which gave me much more information. It gave me a percentage and a value, and this is a personalized version of the standard system tile. So this is what we mean by personalizing the tiles, where you can display different data. And the numbers in here are live, so I'm calling that live tile data. In other words, without even executing the app, just by logging on, these values will be updated. So in real time, you've effectively got a little dashboard here that you can use to monitor your process end to end. And that's where we're going to take you through how to create those. So one word about overview page apps, which is going to be the first one we cover, is that an overview page app allows you to combine multiple apps in one single interactive dashboard. The main thing that's unique about an overview page app, in this case we've got one called the Accounts Receivable Overview, is that there's a Manage Cards option. Now to access the Manage Cards, you use your profile in the top left-hand corner here, and here you'll see the Manage Cards tile option. So this is how you can control what tiles or what apps are available in the overview. Once you've personalized your screen, the other thing to bear in mind is looking for this icon here or the Save as Tile option, and this allows you to click on this and then save your personalized tile. Now, this Manage Cards option is very specific to overview page apps. You don't see it for any other app type. And so in the next demo you're going to see, we're going to cover an overview page app to look at that. So let's have a look at it in action in a live demo. Right, so the first app we're going to look at is the Overview Page app, Accounts Receivable Overview. Again, this is a standard version in the top and my personalized version below. I'm going to start from the standard version by clicking on it and then show you how to personalize it. So depending on your system or your system administrator, there will be certain defaults. In this case, I'm just going to expand the header so you can see. In this case, it defaulted to Euro with the following age buckets, 30, 60, 90, and the following app sitting in the display. Now, the way that an overview page app works is that the idea of the overview page is it can show you multiple apps all in one single dashboard. So think of this as a working dashboard. And so these are one, two, three, four, and as you scroll, five different apps in there. So the first thing to do to be able to personalize is to change your selection criteria. So in this case, I'm going to change the currency to US dollar. And I'm going to look at US um, as a country only so that I only get US company codes. And I can leave the aging buckets as 30, 60, and 90 days and click go. And remember, if you want to change or add any filters up here as well, this adapt filters option also lets you go in here and any other filter criteria um, that you would like to add, you can simply use these little check marks on the right hand side here to add in or remove extra filters that you would like to use. So in this case, I've added in country and that's the one that I've used. Now, in terms of the apps themselves, with this overview page, you can also customize this by dragging things around. So, for instance, if I felt that the aging analysis was the most important thing I want to look at, I can drag that to the top left corner. I can also resize by pulling on the side of an app, and I can then make AR aging analysis as an example that size. You can then, for instance, I could say day sales outstanding. I want to drag that here. Let me make that easier to look at as well. And... Let's have a look here. Then I could say, right, top 10 debtors is something I like next. So I'm going to put that there, and I'm going to drag that wider here. Again, so I can see my top 10 debtors by customer ID. And then AR breakdown is also one that would be good to see. Let me get this inbox out of here. And here I can see the breakdown. And let's just say in this case, different options. I'll say this is by company code. So as an example, if I decided out of all of the different apps available that these are the ones that I like, AR Aging, Day Sales Outstanding, Top 10 Debt is now a breakdown, you can, as you can see, set the layout that you like. In terms of deciding what apps actually appear in here, the thing that's unique about overview page apps 
is if you click on your profile in the top left-hand corner here, you'll see this is the manage cards option um, that I discussed in just before the demo. So when you, this is unique only to overview page apps. And when you click on manage cards, these are all of the apps that you can utilize in the display. So in my example, I did not want to use the quick links. I can switch that off. I don't want to use the inbox and I can say I don't want to use the cash collection tracker. By removing those apps and only keeping the ones that I want, if I say OK, then you'll see that when I scroll down now, those other apps are no longer cluttering the display. And then I can now, um, you know, fine tune the display for what I want to see. The other thing about these apps that appear, you'll see that some of them, if I highlight over here, you'll see they're interactive, that if I click on an app, it does a drill down. So there the aging analysis drilled down into the total receivables when I clicked on it. And I can come back on that. That's why if you click on an individual bar, or you'll see that the header highlights in this gray, which means I can also click on something like that to be able to, to drill down to see more information about the total receivables in this example. We will go through these apps in individual detail later. But this is just for you to understand that it is possible on certain of these apps, especially if you get the gray outline or the bars are interactive, that you can drill down. Other apps like this AI breakdown here, you'll see there's no nothing highlights there. I can't drill down on that app there. And on some of the apps, you might also need to um, change the way the data has been selected for them to update for you. So remember, once you've arrange the tile the way that you like it and you want to save that as a personalized version so you don't have to repeat your reformatting. This option here at the top, share option, has got the save as tile. And here I can say council overview and I can say this is US countries um, in US dollar as an example and because this is the, the one um, that I created. And I, and I click OK, it will then save this tile to my home page. If I go back to the Home dashboard, you'll now see this is the standard one from the system. This is the one I pre-created that I showed you earlier, and this is the one that I just created right now. You'll see US countries in US dollar. And now you'll notice that if I now launch that tile that I just saved, it automatically repeats the format that I had before. You'll see that the US dollar and country US is already there for me. I'm just going to squeeze up this pin, and it's already got the format that I like. So that's great to be able to see. And this is a really nice dashboard because you can have a, a bird's eye view or, or macro view of the business process, age analysis, day sales outstanding, what, what's your breakdown by company code and your top 10 debtors without having to go further at this stage. That's a nice overview page to use. And remember that under your profile here, the manage cards option is how you decide which apps are available to show in the display. And you can always toggle these on and off as you need them to be able to change the format. And that's unique, again, to the overview page apps. Um, these apps will be available on the overview page versions from um, version 1809 onwards, but it's a really nice um, feature of being able to have a, a really good, strong interactive dashboard for your end-to-end -end accounts receivable process. And I'm just going to click the home page to go back to the dashboard, and that's the how to use your overview page app. Now let's have a look at these apps in more detail. Okay, we're now going to look at AI aging analysis. And the first smart business app we're going to look at is called Total Receivables. And this is what it looks like. So the scenario here is that as an AI analyst, you want to review accounts receivable for amounts that are overdue and also items that are not yet due in different aging buckets, i.e. 0 to 30 days, 60 to 90 days, or 90 to 120 days, etc. And once you are looking at your items in these age buckets, you can also interact with the data, like view split, slice, and dice by company code, look at the top 10 customers overdue, and even drill down all the way to customer invoice details. We're also going to show you how to personalize the tile so that you can get status at a glance using the live tile. In other words, in this example here, we personalize the tile to see at a glance that for U.S. company codes, there's 7.79 million total receivables. So let's have a look at a live demo of that app in action. Right, so this example here, we're going to look at the total receivables app. And remember, this is a smart business app versus an overview page app, which was the um, one that we looked at in the first lesson. So for total receivables, this is the standard version delivered by the system. And here is an example underneath of a personalized version for U.S. company codes only. So I'm going to show you how to personalize to create one that looks like that. So let's click on total receivables. So the Smart Business app 
again, it'll first come up with certain parameters defined by your system administrator. In this case, it has already come up in US dollars for me, which is great, so I don't have to change the currency. But as an example, if I want to see, um, um, you know, US countries only, I do have an option to use this country's filter over here where I can pick different countries or just to show you from a previous lesson by using the adapt filters here, I can also add in extra filters here at the top of the screen, for instance, here is country as a way to also um, restrict the data on selection. So here I'm going to add in country US. Okay, let's get that going. Let's make sure that comes up. There we go, country US. And now when I run the data, I will only have US countries underneath. The main difference between using a filter at the top versus these ones here is that the filters at the top filter the data when you select it. These filters then allow you subsequent filtering after the initial filter is done. So this one reduces this, reduces the amount of volume of the data. This one helps you fine-tune the data. So for total receivables, the main thing, to understand here is these are the different buckets that you can use for your aging. So they are flexible that you can change the buckets on the fly. Here we've got 30, 60, and 90, which is on the bottom axis over here. And this, the system here is really showing us in the, um, first of all, it's going to show the largest interval from the left-hand side here, like greater than 90 days, 328,000. We can see there is in the fourth due period. And then these are the other buckets, 60 to 90, 30 to 60 and 0 to 30 for the 3.72 million. And then the system also shows under the total receivables app what's also happening in future. So in this case, 0 to 30 in future, 1.54 million is going, is going to become due. And then these are further future dates depending on your invoicing in the system. So the key thing to understand is total receivables shows you all receivables all up. So this means we've got 7.7 .7 million total receivables for the US. And the graph does default to those buckets, but it is also possible to this change the look as well. So here you could say well, it will show me the top 10 customers as an example. So changing to top 10 in the US, this is a really useful view. Now I can see the actual customers' names and what is again due in the future or overdue in this case. This is a 0 to 30 days, and this is going to be the second period, which is then the 60 to, uh, 60 to 90 days. So you can modify this view and then save different views that you like for your system. The um, Another example here, for instance, if I choose a company code, and here I've got different company codes in a, that I'm analyzing. And so, for instance, if I said, show me this company code FM50 only as an example. So scroll down here. We pick a, uh, one of the company codes. So let, let's just say we want FM50. And this is allows you to fill that list. Then now this only shows me the amount for for the one company code. You'll see when it refreshes. And this is the total amount, and then the breakdown, which is future and current. And then I could say, okay, um, for that view now, if I want to drill down, I could say, show me what makes up this 2.3 million. So if I actually um, make a selection here, I can then choose on the bottom right hand corner here just so you know you can drill down also to the actual customer line items themselves so this is the traditional line item app that you would be using but it's important to understand that it is possible to actually drill down to a particular company code where it's open items and get right down to the lowest level of the invoices themselves so drill down is possible I'm just going to back up to my view and in this case I'm just going to reset down to back to the due periods to analyze the data and once I've um, saved the um, um, the view that I like, so in this case I want to get all company codes back, so I've got back to my 7.7 um, .7 million view of the U.S. So again, this was the receivables for country U.S. in total. And if I like that view and this is something that I want to use in future to analyze, this is where I can then use this save as option here at the bottom to save it as a tile. And this is to create my personalized version to rerun. So in this case, um, I'm going to save it as a numeric tile. In other words, I'll keep one metric here, and I can say here US um, uh, countries only as an example. Uh, 
get my spelling right there. And this measure is going to be on the total amount. I can say, well, let me uh, see what the amount is. And I could say, okay, so my target is maybe going to be 500, 1,000. I want to get a, a warning at 100,000. And I want to show critical at 250. 250. And so what this is going to do is that the, the color of the tile will change depending on what um, I, I've set for uh, for my targets. Uh, actually, in my goal type here, I want to minimize what I'm aiming for. So let's just go again. So critical a million. Sorry, 250 we had. Let's set a warning at 100, 1, 2, 3, and a target at 50,000. Okay, there we go. So... What this will do is it'll color code the value that I'm trying to analyze and save the tile. So when it comes back, it says your tile saved. If I now click on the home page and I'm going to refresh my browser at the moment, you don't see the extra tile. I'm just going to refresh my browser for a second and let it update. And now you'll see that there'll be the totals receivable app, which comes delivered with the system, which had the um, 13 million in it. That's going to show the version of the app that I'd previously personalized. And then it's going to show the version that I've just created now and saved for us. And the update will depend on the speed of your system. So we go standard, previously done, and now this is the one I've just created right now. So now you can see at a glance, we know the 7.79 million of total AR is outstanding for the US. And because I've saved this as a personalized tile, if I simply click on that tile, I can always rerun this view without having to redo my selection criteria. And you'll see I've defaulted to the 7.7 .7 million and with the view that I wanted to see. And the reason why the 7 million is in red is because my target was a million and now that I've exceeded the target, it is showing up as red. So that's a quick preview of how you can use the US Total Receivables app. So staying on the theme of AR aging and looking at overdue receivables, it's what we're going to look at in this case. So in the prior demo, we looked at total receivables. But in this case, we're going to focus on overdue receivables specifically. So the scenario here is you're an accounts receivable analyst, but you're specifically targeting overdue receivables in your various age buckets, like 0 to 30 days, 30 to 60 days, etc. The additional metric that this overdue receivables tell gives you is it shows you the percentage of total AR that is overdue. So in other words, we can see straight away from this tile that 88% of the total receivables are overdue. So that's the extra piece of information you get from the overdue receivables tile. Again, you'll have options to um, slice and dice or drill down to invoice detail level, look at your top 10 customers overdue. And the same thing, the ability to save the live tile and to personalize it so you can see status at a glance. So in this case, I'm going to show you how to create what we call a dual tile, which is double wide. So on the left-hand side of the tile, we can see here that 80% of the U.S. total receivables are overdue, and the overdue amount here is 6.2 million U.S. dollars, and then beneath here it shows the number of open items themselves. So let's have a look at a live demo on how to personalize and drive the overdue receivables tile. Right, so in this example, continuing with looking at the aging of accounts receivable, before we looked at the total receivables, so now we're going to focus on overdue receivables specifically because this will be the most pressing item that you need to analyze. This is, again, the standard version delivered by the system. And this one below here, you'll see that it's a much bigger tile. It's a double-wide tile that's showing two different measures on it. And I'm going to show you how we can configure that tile. Here we're seeing the percentage of the total AR that is overdue, i.e. 80%, we can see how much is overdue, 6.2 million, and the number of open items over here on the tile as well. So let's see how we created that. So let's launch the Smart Business app overdue receivables. And depending on your um, system basic configuration, you, it might not come up with the selection criteria you want. So here, US dollars is already there, so we get on that. And in this case, again, I want to have U.S. countries only. I'm happy to keep the aging buckets 30, 60, and 90, but instead of using the adapt filters for the country, I just want to show you here that it is also possible to use the filter over here. If data volume isn't too much of a problem, you can then also filter at this stage. So here I've changed that, that we only see U.S. Um, countries themselves showing up. 
So here, the difference here that it's now overdue receivables only is that what you'll notice is that for the aging buckets, 30, 60, 90, these are all the aging buckets, 0 to 30, 30 to 60, 60 to 90, and greater than 90. The very first column does still show um, what is not uh, due yet, but it's all put under one column so it doesn't confuse you. So this is not due yet because the focus here is on the overdue detail. Again, similar to the other apps, it is possible here to also do things like show the uh, uh, top 10 only so that you can see which uh, customers are the ones that are uh, having the most problem that you should be investigating. So you can um, change the system to look like that. And you can also obviously change things to, you know, company codes, etc. you know, various other versions that you want to look at. But if I go back to the due period, so let's just say example, we also re- really wanted to analyze the biggest items that are overdue, i.e. the greater than 90 bucket. So what I can do here on some of the filters, if they don't all fit, they'll be under this filter here. So here I'm going to say for the net due interval, I want you to show me the items that are in bucket E that are greater than 90 only. So this is a way that you can then focus the data specifically on what you're wanting to analyze, i.e. the 328,000 here that's outstanding for the longest possible time. And again, if you then said show me the top 10 customers for that, this would be the top 10 customers for everybody that's greater than 90 days. So this is just a way that you can focus for your analysis to see exactly what you're trying to go after. So here we know that New Balance as a customer has got 75,000 outstanding and it's greater than 90 days. So now if you want to look at the individual details that make up that 75K, if you, if you click on or select that item, you can then always use this drill down here to drill down to the customer line items, and this will then get you to the lowest level of the individual invoices that you can chase up. So here you'll see this makes up the 75K. And remember, on any particular invoice, it is also possible to actually click here and drill down to the actual journal entry itself to go down to the absolute lowest possible level of detail to see, you know, uh, when the invoice was entered, you know, you know who did it, what are the payment terms, etc. And this back to journal entry also then shows you the, the the debit and credit line items here that you can see. So once you've drilled down to the lowest level, remember it's possible to jump back from the journal entry uh, to the customer line items. This was a seventy five thousand. I can then drill back again, which then gets me back to my um, dashboard of my top ten customers. So this is really just to give you a flavor for how you can really go after as much detail as you like when you're doing the analysis. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to reset it back to the way that I want to save it, which is by a due period, and I want to save it for all intervals so that I've got, again, my macro view for all U.S. uh, company codes, and 80% of the total AR is overdue. This is what we're seeing from the snapshot. So in order to save this, to rerun it in future, I can use this option here to say save as tile. And um, in this case, instead of just having a uh, just a numeric tile, I want to show you a trick here that you can choose different types of tile. So in this case, I could say, let me make this a dual tile, i.e. it's a double wide tile. So I can say US only here. And the first measure is the receivables ratio, again with my color coding. That'll show me the percentage um, of the total AR that is overdue. But as all, for these extra measures on the right-hand side, I can choose what I want those to be. So I can say here, okay, for the first measure, show me the number of open items. Um, and good means it'll show up in green. But for the second measure, I can say here, show me the overdue amount as an example. And I want you to make that critical, i.e. show it in red. So what you'll notice here is that when I save this, I'll get much more information about the tile. So if I say OK, the first thing the system does is it saves the personalized version of that tile. and It'll come back and say tile saved. And if I now click on my home page, at first I don't see the double tile. I'll just refresh my browser. And while that updates, you'll then see the version that I just created right now. So we'll have in the dashboard the standard version delivered by the system the previous double wide tile that I had saved as a precursor to this lesson and then the one that I've literally created right now, which will be the up-to-date one. And remember, you can save as many different flavors of these tiles as you like. So here you'll see, again, standard one with the system, the one that I previously created and the one I created right now. So here you'll see again, this is telling us that overdue, 80% of the total AR we see here is overdue. 
and we can see that 6.24 million is the value. And we can see here in the terms of the number of items, the, the display is a bit clipped there. But um, if I click on that tile and run it, then I can rerun the tile at any time to get back to the format without having to redo it. And this 80% here is in red because I said that it would be critical if it went over that value. So that's how you can create a personalized tile. In this case, it's a dual tile because it's double width for maximum amount of information. But it's really a nice way that you can then see, okay, total AR is 7.79, 80% is overdue, and 6.2 million is the value of the amount that's overdue. So that's using the overdue receivables tile. In this lesson, we have an additional tool for analyzing overdue receivables. And in this case, this task specializes in overdue receivables by risk class. So when you're an accounts receivable analyst and you're, and you're looking at overdue and you're specifically focusing on risk class, the thing to bear in mind is that a risk class is assigned to customers via the credit management side of SAP. So this course isn't covering credit management detail, but think of this as customers are assigned a risk class, i.e. high risk, medium risk, or low risk via the credit management functionality. And then this tile allows you to then carve up your overdue AR by risk class. So analyzing by risk class, looking at the top 10 customers by risk class. And again, you can also save a personalized live tile version. In this case here, you'll see this tile has been personalized to show the U.S. company codes only, and it is showing the risk classes that are available. In this case, we have some high-risk customers with 12,000 and medium customers by um, 700,000. So let's see using this risk class app in more detail. Right, in this example, we are going to look at overdue receivables again, but in this case, we're going to analyze it by risk class. So this is where um, we can then, instead of in this overdue tile here, this was the percentage of total receivables that was overdue. Here we're going to split it up by risk class, and we're going to create a personalized version. So let me launch that. And so if we talk about risk class, for you to be aware is that the risk class is assigned in credit management and assigned to the customer master record. Um, in this lesson, we're not going to go through credit management in detail, but this is what you're looking at here in the system. The risk classes are at the bottom here. So here we've got um, uh, no risk for 874. We've got medium risk, high risk, and then customers that are not assigned any risk class. So this assignment is, is from credit management for the customers, and that's how we're doing this analysis. So in order to make this more meaningful, I'm going to make sure that I've got US dollars for myself, which we do have here. And I'm going to adapt the filter here to, again, go for uh, country US only. Just as a reminder, you check your filter on to add it into the display. And I'm going to say go here, type in US to make sure I've got US only, and then refresh that tile. Now, when I'm analyzing risk classes, customers who are not assigned a risk class is not going to be meaningful in this analysis. So I'm going to click on risk class here as a filter and make sure that I only check on the risk classes that we want to look at and not have anything on not assigned so that it will be a much more meaningful analysis. So here you'll see that we've got medium and high are the um, totals that we can then see. In this case as well, scrolling up and down here is not that useful. I can change this actually to change the chart to make it a bar chart horizontal if I find that more useful, which you can see here is easier for me to display. So to get another an idea of different ways that you can manipulate the display for the data. So in this case, again, remember that you can always then also pivot the display to things like your uh, top 10 customers again. So by risk class, you can then look at the individual customers that you want to analyze and you can always drill down to line items if you need to from this app feature. But in this example, let me keep it as risk class and horizontal, and that's going to be a good metric for me to be able to analyze. So to save this as a personalized tile, I'm going to use the save as tile option here. And in this case, I'm going to use this comparison tile format to save some of the data here. I'm going to say US risk class as an example. And I'm going to ignore the gold types in this case. In other words, you don't have to select colors. But the dimension I want to analyze by here or information to present on the live tile is by risk class. So I can say, by risk class, show me what those totals are in there within the sending dimension. And you can choose a neutral color or you can add any other colors. Let's just keep it neutral. So if I say OK, 
the system will come back and confirm that that tile has been saved. And then I'll, um, that tile has been saved, so I'll go back to my home screen. And initially I don't see the tile. I'm going to refresh my browser. So again, now we'll be in a position where we'll see the standard tile that the system has created, the one that I'd personalized before, and then the one that I've just created right now. So we'll just wait for the system to update, depending on your um, system performance. Okay, so here we go. We've got the um, receivables by risk class. That's a standard system one. This is the one I created before, and this is one that I've created right now. So now you can see that for the receivables that are overdue, in terms of the high risk class, I can see that 12,300 are overdue and the medium risk class 772 are overdue. So it's just another piece of information to help you drill down more succinctly on your overdue receivables and in this case by risk class. So that's using that tile. Okay, so this is the last app in our AR aging series, and in this case, we're going to be looking at future receivables, i.e. receivables that are not yet due. So as an accounts receivable analyst, you want to look at your future accounts receivable by age bucket to help predict some of your cash flow that's going to be going out in future. Sorry, cash flow that's going to be coming in in future from those customers. And this also gives you options to view the data by company code, top 10 customers, just like the other tiles, and you're also able to Look at the status at a glance by using a live tile. So in this example here, I'm going to show you how to personalize the tile to show you, for instance, for the US only, not yet due receivables, what is the total amount? In this case, 1.54 million. And this will be a complementary tile that you can then use in conjunction with the overdue receivables one, the total receivables, and the receivables by risk class. So let's look at the future receivables tile in action. Right, so in the previous two lessons, we focused on overdue receivables. In this example, we're going to look at future receivables, and that's what this tile is for. And we're going to look at, again, the standard system one versus a personalized version, and we'll show you how to save that. So let's click on future receivables. So depending on your on your system settings, um, you can default your currency. So in my case, I want US dollars. For my age buckets, there's 30, 60, 90. I'll keep those age buckets. And... I can adapt filters to add in country as an example again to only show the US. So let me put that in there and make sure I've only got US countries to be displayed. Okay, let me run that. Okay. And here you'll see that at the bottom, for the age buckets, all the buckets from B onwards here are all future looking buckets. At the moment I've got 1.54 that is uh, the amount uh, not yet due in the, in the first column. There's nothing else that's way out into the future. The first column shows everything that's overdue. So that's just to help you build up a total. But the focus of this app is on future receivables. So as an example here, if I don't want to have this column at all, then I can always then choose to use the filter here, go to the net due interval, and I can say show me everything except the column A, which is the stuff that's overdue, and only show me future. So this way I can just kind of tidy up the screen to say only show me future, which is the 1.54. And remember, again, you do have the option here that if you want to um, specify, you know, the company codes that you're looking at or filter by accounting clerk, all those options are possible. And you've also got your top 10 um, customers as well was a very common view to leave on that you can show for future receivables who are my top 10 as an example. Let the system just update to show that. And there we have it's all sitting under one customer. Okay. So I'm just going to leave this by due period. And so I'm just going to say this is a live tile because all the other analysis options are very much the same as the overdue receivables tile. But in this case, when I save this tile, I'm going to just keep it as a straight numeric tile and I'm going to say US only. And I only want to show... Uh, the amount that is not overdue because it's future receivables, and I want to maximize the amount that I that is um, outstanding, so that I'm not um, outstanding in the future, so that I'd, I don't have to uh, worry about that as much. I need to worry about what is overdue. So for my target, I could put in here five million. Let's just say I could put a warning at two point five, and let's just say put critical at. Um, actually, this is critical at 1 million. Let 
Okay. So now that I've put in the my um, threshold, that will then change the, the, the color coding of what we see on the tile, which will be the total of this 1.4. Let's wait for that to update and save the tile. And once it's saved, tile is saved, I can go to my home screen. At first, I don't see the tile. I'm just refreshing my browser. And wait for the screen to refresh. And then, as per the other tiles, we'll have the standard system delivered tile, the one I personalized prior to the lesson, and then the one that we just did right now. Okay, there we go. So this is the future receivables tile that I just created right now, the 1.54, and it's coming in orange color because that was within the warning threshold that we had created. So the main reason for having this as a separate tile is really as part of your overall analysis on your dashboard. As you can see, for instance, total U.S. receivables is 7.79. I can see 80% is overdue. The overdue amount is 6.2. And now I also know that for my future receivables, 1.54 million is coming up in future. So that's using the future receivable style. Right, so for this app, this is one of the first of the KPI apps called Days Beyond Terms or DBT. So this is a, a KPI for your smart business app. And as an AR manager, if you want to view your this key performance indicator, which is days beyond terms, it helps you analyze the payment history that you've had from your customers. So it helps measure the average number of days overdue invoices were outstanding before they were paid. But in order for something to show up in this uh, metric, the payments must be cleared and the calculation also includes payments that are within terms. So in other words, if uh, you have got um, cash sales, then this indicator doesn't really help you. It really is only good to measure credit sales. So the calculation is based on the individual payment amounts multiplied by the days in arrears, and this is per transaction divided by the sum of all payment amounts. So the thing here is that um, if something is paid in advance, then the days in arrears will be a negative number, and that will be favorable. If the days in arrears are then overdue, multiplied by the payment amount, that will then be unfavorable, and that affects the number. And this shows a 12-month rolling average, and there also is an option there to show a ratio between the payments that are within terms versus the payments that are beyond terms, so you can compare the two. And again, you are able to personalize this and get um, detail at a glance by using a live tile. So in this case, this is a personalized version for U.S. countries only, showing a days beyond terms of two. So this is two days um, beyond terms, which is really a good number. Normally, a target is probably more around, you know, 45. So in order to see this in action, this is the standard SAP logic, but let's have a look at the app in real time. Right, in this example here, we're going to look at a KPI called Days Beyond Terms. This is the uh, standard SAP one, uh, showing here Days Beyond Terms, 26 days for the past 12 months. And here we have a personalized version for the US only, showing two days. So I'm going to show you how to personalize this app and how to use it. So as mentioned before, you've, you first need to make sure the selection criteria is what you're looking for. So in this case, we've got a default to US dollar, which I'm happy with. I'm not going to change that. And we'd have straight up on the screen here by period because it's a rolling 12-month view, the number of days beyond terms that are happening on each um, uh, invoice. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm just going to then restrict this to uh, country US just to get a, a smaller subset to be able to analyze to show you how to do that personalization. And if I say go and update the chart now, it'll update specifically to the US only. And this is how the days beyond terms average over 12 months ended up in two days. But we can see by period what's happening there. Remember, days beyond terms, in this case, for example, this is telling us that in November 29, the average was 30 days beyond terms. So in other words, the customers paid late. But where you'll see a negative number here, this minus 3 and minus 7, this means that the customers paid seven days early or paid three days early. So this is a reflection of all payments that have historically happened over time and how, how efficient that looks. So in the test system, we've got a lot of zeros here, so the data isn't that clean. But generally, you should be targeting something less than 45 days as a good measure, depending on your type of business. So the one thing you can also do here 
that's quite useful is it is also possible to also switch the display to show the ratio of payments within terms versus beyond terms. So in other words, payments within terms are the blue bars. So all the blue bars mean the customer's paid 100% within the terms. But payments with any of the orange shows, this is where customers paid late. So in other words, in November and here again in June and July, the customers paid beyond their terms and a little bit here in March. So this is also just a good way to get with cleaner data the ratio of customers paying on time versus not paying on time. You can also default to your top 10 customers here as well that you can also quickly see uh, days beyond terms who your toughest customer is and maybe who you do have to go after, potentially look at the way that credit is being managed for that customer. So I'm just going to default it back to period. So a very good useful KPI here, days beyond terms. But remember, this KPI is only useful if customers are actually paying because this is looking at the historical payment pattern. If your customers aren't paying at all, then this metric won't be very useful because this is a calculation of how they paid and it only works on cleared payments. Again, you can save this as a personalized tile. I'm going to say yes, save this tile. I'm just going to keep it as a straight numeric because that's the value that I'm trying to track. I can say US only because I'll save this for US company codes only. It is possible to also set your um, colors here as well if you want. You can say, well, my target is 30 days. Give me a warning at 45 and critical if I'm over 60 days. Um, as an example, I could then save that tile. And once that tile updates, I can go back to my home screen and to refresh my browser. At first, I don't see the tile. But once I've done the refresh, then that tile will update. And again, as per the other tiles, I'll have the SAP standard created tile days beyond terms. I'll have my one that I created before this lesson for you to see. And then we'll have the one that's just been created right now during the lesson for days beyond terms. So here we go. Standard system one here. At 26, the one I created before, and here's the one right now that we just created showing two days beyond terms. So it's green because it's within the threshold we were looking for. So it looks like for the US, only for this current test data, customers have been paying on time, which is a good metric. So that's how to use the KPI, days beyond terms. Right, for this final KPI, we're going to look at the tile called Day Sales Outstanding. So this is a Fiori app. It looks at the day sales outstanding KPI for the last 12 months, and it's measured in the number of days. So as an accounts receivable manager, you would like to review this KPI, and what it tells you is the average number of days it takes to receive payment from customers, i.e. how efficiently you are converting sales to cash. Remember, in this case as well, only credit sales are taking taken into consideration. If people are paying by cash, then there are no terms to monitor. Now, day sales outstanding, the basic calculation is total open receivables multiplied by 30 days, divided by total monthly sales. So this is the basic calculation. But one thing to bear in mind is that seasonality has a huge impact on this calculation. So in other words, if um, sales are not consistent every month and if customers don't have the same consistent payment terms, then just doing this straight calculation might not give you a number that is that useful. So... In terms of modifying this calculation in the system, there are two different divisors. And what we mean by a divisor, in other words, for total open receivables times 30, you can also um, divide this or average it over a certain number of months of receivables. So in other words, you could say take total open receivables and instead of just um, dividing by one because you're expecting a, a consistent monthly cadence of month to month, you could say divide it by three months and actually get more of an average of three months or a quarterly type view of your receivables. And the same thing goes for average monthly sales. You could take the total um, average monthly sales and just have it per period, or you can also add in an additional divisor where you can then say basis over three months or six months or 12 months. So the main thing to bear in mind is this is going to depend on the type of industry that you're working in, your seasonality. So if payments and sales are both consistent, i.e., um, the customers buy consistently on the same cadence and monthly sales are not lumpy. In other words, you don't have a spike in summer or winter. It's a consistent flow. Then both of these variable divisors can be small and they could be the same. So in the standard system, the divisor is one for the top open receivables and it's one for the bottom number of monthly sales. In other words, there's no impact. But if you need to modify that because of seasonality or your type of business, you can use numbers like 3 or 6 or 12 in order to 
more average out the total open receivables or the monthly sales. And just remember that if your customer AR is also open for more than a month, i.e. if your payment terms are longer than 30 days, then the divisor should not be too small, i.e. you should not leave the divisor as one for total open receivables if customer AR are often given, you know, 45 or 60 days terms. But this is something you're going to have to experiment with on your own. And we will go through some examples of this and how it can affect the DSO number or the day sales outstanding number during the next demo. So let's have a look. Right, so for this last tile, we're going to look at the day sales outstanding KPI. So again, this is a standard one, SAP delivered with the 235 days. And this is the customized one that I created at 55 days for the US. So let's see how we got to that position. So looking at uh, day, sales, day sales outstanding, the first thing you want to do is to confirm the currency you selected, which you'll have in US dollars here. And then the system will default these two variables here. So these are the divisors that I mentioned in the previous slide. So this is the additional divisor to change how the system calculates the rolling average for open receivables. And this is the divisor for how the system will calculate the rolling average for revenue or for sales. So in other words, when you're having the calculation of receivables divided by sales, the default is one. So there's no change in the divisor. But if you want to change the analysis to something like quarterly because customers have their open items open for let's just say three months at a time or they have a long tail in sales three months at a time then you'd actually want to make this three and three as an example and you'll see what that can do to the number so the number before was 235 and now it's 255 so these devices here i'm just going to set it back to one and one the default are going to have a big impact on what the actual result is and this will be determined on your industry or your type of business so going back to the, the default of one and of one and one, I'm going to take the country and I'm going to change that to US. So we get US only countries like we've done before to just give an example of what that looks like. And if I do that, this is now you can see for the last 12 months, the average number of day sales outstanding is 55. And that was the number that you saw on the live tile. So that's how we got to that number. And you'll see that uh, uh, for the months here, we've got the number of day sales outstanding that is showing up for each of these different periods. Again, you can also um, switch this up to show, for example, show me the um, customers by top 10 as an example. And by company code is another example of how you can also rearrange this list if you want to analyze different types of detail. I'm just going to go back to the period now to chat through this a bit more. So if you're in an industry where Customers pay usually within the first 30 days and there's a very homogenous um, sales cycle um, in terms of the seasonality. There's no big seasonal bounces up and down. Then leaving this one and one for the default is okay. But if you, for, ex for instance, customers have payment terms that last a while, maybe it's over a period of a quarter, and let's just say you have seasonality in your sales, i.e. they're not the same. You have different lumps every quarter. If I change that to three and three as an example, you'll see that the 55 that's currently presented there if I update that, that now becomes 44. So it's actually reduced the um, uh, the number of day sales outstanding. And now you'll see that I've got um, more accurate looking numbers here along the previous periods. And that's because in the test system, um, sales would have been out, would have been lumpy, and um, people in the test system are not um, doing payments very often. So doing a three month divisor here for receivables and a three month divisor for revenue would give you a more accurate position of a quarterly type flow. But you might be in a business where, where you want to say, look, um, you know, receivables are spread out over 12 months, but customers generally pay every three. These numbers do not have to be the same. So in this example, you'll see it's jumped up now to 141. So there's a massive difference. Um, day sales outstanding by changing these devices here. So you really need to um, look at the pattern in your business and see which number fits the type of business that you are running and feel free to modify these at any time to see how it works for your business. But this is just an important element to understand in day sales outstanding that you need to think about how receivables are collected and how revenue is generated in order to get a meaningful number. Uh, once you do have the chart saved to the way that you like it, and you could save multiple versions to track uh, whether, you know, quarterly as an example or annual, you could change what that looks like. 
then you can click save as tile. In this case, I'm going to say DSO US only as an example. Again, here you can also set your goals. So I can say, well, I want 60 days, 40 days, and maybe my target is 30 as an example. And I can save that so that will then create a custom tile. And once that tile is saved, then I can go back to my home screen. I'm going to refresh. And then you'll now see that I end up creating an additional tile that has got the standard system one, the one that we created before the lesson, and then the one we just created right now. Let's wait for the system to update. So there we have it, the original one from the system, 235, the one we had created before 55, and this one at 44. And remember, this one here had the default in the devices of sales and receivables of only one period or one month, whereas in this version here, we had three months as a devisor, so you can see the number is different. So you can always create multiple versions like this and then track which one is most accurate. And remember, you can always rerun the tile and see what metrics you've set in the background. This is where you can see this one had a rolling average of three months for time to pay receivables and an average of three months for the rolling average calculation for revenue and sales. And remember, this is going to be the average number of days um, sales outstanding for that particular period or customer. So that's the day sales outstanding metric. Great. Congratulations on completing the Advanced AR Analytics Fiori Apps course. With this course, you've now learned how to use the AR Overview Page app, where you have the Manage Cards function in the Overview page to create a dashboard. And you've also learned how to personalize the individual smart business apps. So here you learned how to navigate and drill down various views, save personalized live tiles, and use different types of tile, like a numeric tile, a dual tile, or a comparison tile. And you also learned how to arrange those different tiles in a Fury launch pad to be able to monitor AR. So a couple of reminders that are also going to be in an appendix quick reference guide. The Fury Overview Page app, this is where you can combine multiple apps in a single interactive dashboard. And the Manage Cards function that you will see under your user profile is unique to Overview Page apps and then use the Save Tile option to save this. So this is what we covered in that Overview Page app. For smart business apps, remember, in this case, when you use the Save as Tile option, this allows you to personalize that tile, and this is where you can specify different types of tile, whether it was going to be a numeric tile or comparison tile, or in the one case, there's another mini dashboard, a dual tile, where you had a double wide tile where you could have a measure on the right-hand side and a statistic on the left, and you also had the different color coding options depending on what you set for critical warning and target. And remember, when you create any of these live tiles, you can also save the app multiple times with different settings. You don't have to stick to only one. So you can save lots of different criteria and arrange them in your dashboard. And remember, in terms of your dashboard, you've either got the entire launch pad where you actually line up the apps next to each other using the different live tiles or smart business apps. In this example, we can see total receivables were almost 8 million, 80% overdue, which was $6.2 million, and this was a breakdown by risk class. So this is, in effect, a mini dashboard from the launch pad. And then you also had the Overview Page app, which is basically a, another kind of dashboard where you can view multiple apps side by side in one view. I think this is a really great feature now for embedded analytics in S4HANA that you no longer have to wait for BI or BW, and you don't need to understand any code in order to program these dashboards for yourself. So I hope you enjoy using this feature. So the next steps, practice the various methods learned. Experiment with your own live tiles and dashboards. What is most appropriate for your business and what works best or which fields and views are optimized for your business? So think about what elements of your AR process end-to-end -end should be monitored. So are age buckets important to you? Does 30, 60, and 90 days work? Do you want larger age buckets or smaller? Top 10 customers, is this a, a big portion for you? So then optimize your views based on what's important to your business. And how efficient is my department? Is day sales outstanding more appropriate for your type of business or is days beyond terms work better for your type of business? So remember, you can experiment with these different KPIs and see which ones work well for you. So thanks again for taking the course and we'll end off with a disclaimer.